Metro, thanks for the support. A 5900X at 690 US or a 5800X at 580 US after tax and VAT, is the R9 still worth it? And here are some towards yours. Well, thank, thank you. you. I would still buy the 5900X. It's $110. Yeah. For 50% more cores, 12 cores and double the cash, in the long run, it isn't $100 more. In the long run, I actually believe, now, pricing advice is based upon the differences in U.S. pricing. Now, if you live in a country where it's $250 difference, my advice would change. But in his case and in the U.S., it's $450 for the 8 core and $550 for the 12 core. If you only look at the purchase price up front, obviously the eight core is enough for most people. The eight core is cheaper. I understand why people would buy it. If you look at things from a total cost of ownership point of view and instead of the, what does it cost me right this second? If you think of your life as what the life cycle cost of everything is, I believe that for most people, there are always exceptions, but for most people, a Ryzen 9 5900X mm -hmm. is less expensive than a 5800X. Let me back up and say that one more time for anybody who missed what I said. Total cost of ownership, meaning what you paid for it divided by the time you owned it and it was useful. The Ryzen 9 5900X is less expensive than the Ryzen 7 5800X for a majority of people, not 100%, not 100, but more than 50%. Mm -hmm. What percentage? I could pick a number out of my you know, hat, and but it, some number greater than 50%. Think of it this way. No matter what your workload is, whether you play World of Warships, World of Warcraft, whether you play Dota 2 and League of Legends, frankly, if you play those, you don't need either one of them. But... Uh, do you play Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Do you want to play Cyberpunk 2077? Do you want to play the next game? Do you want to play the next Assassin's Creed? Do you want to play the next Shadow of the Tomb Raider? The next, well, it won't be called Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but whatever. Yeah. The next one. At some future point, eight cores won't be enough. When that future point is will be different for each of you. Exactly. For Bob over here, it might be three years that eight cores is no bueno. For Stuart, it might be four years. And for Kevin, it might be five years. And Frank, way in the back, it might be seven years. But at some point in the future, for almost everybody involved, eight cores will not be enough. It's just a matter of when. Do you use one monitor? Do you use two monitors and you multitask? Do you want to play every new game at maximum detail and you upgrade your, your video card often? Or do you just play existing games for a while and you buy games once they're on sale and a discount? Do you live stream or only play? Those are wildly different usage scenarios. Yeah. But if you use a Ryzen 7 5800X for three years, then it costs you $150 a year. If you use a Ryzen 9 5900X, and because of whatever your exact same workloads that made eight cores kind of feel painful after three years, today they'll be great. For 95% for of you, eight cores and 12 cores will provide you a very similar experience. The majority of you do not need 12 cores today. But it's $100 more. But if 12 cores means you can run your machine for five years instead of three, mm -hmm. that's $110 a year. 150 minus 110 times five. The Ryzen 9 5900X in that scenario is $200 less expensive than the Ryzen 7. You save money. You are literally throwing... Now, it is... Look, it is true. I understand the counter-argument. If you buy a Ryzen 7 5800X today and you keep it three years and you upgrade to whatever the then new 
12 core chip is in three years. The 12 core chip in three years will be faster than the 12 core chip today. True. And let's say the price drops. Let's say it's only 400 or 450 then. But you'll have then spent $900 exactly. over six years instead of 550 over, over five. Correct. So if you do that same upgrade, let's say you do 450 today, and let's be generous. Let's say the new 12 core chip in three years is 400. And let's say if you upgrade every three years instead of every five, so divide that by six years, that's $144, $142 a year. That's That gets you a faster chip sooner, but a slower chip today, and it's still more than the $110 of the Ryzen 9. The Ryzen 9 5900X, if you can make it last for five years, is less expensive than a lower end chip bought every three years, assuming you go with the Ryzen 7. Now, what's interesting is if you take a Ryzen 5 5600X and say, I'm gonna make this work for three years and then buy a 12 core chip. Well, that brings up a couple of interesting questions because $300 divided by three years is $100. And that's technically $10 cheaper than the Ryzen 9. And if you bought another $300 chip in three years and used that for three years, that'd be $100 a year, which is fine. So long as for the next three years, you don't need more than six cores. So long as the new Xbox X and PlayStation 5 games, which are being developed for eight core machines. Yeah, I know they're not as fast as this, but eight core machines. But the, see, the PC needs more anyway because the, in, on the PC you have Windows and background tasks. And mm -hmm. window, it's just not as optimized as the consoles. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're going to play all the new fancy games for the next three years on a six-core chip, okay, fine, fair enough. That might work. But what happens if two years from now the next game runs like crap? How many people three years ago, bought an i7-7700K because four cores was all you needed. Yes. And today, you're trying to play, you know, AAA games, you're trying to multitask, you're trying to live stream, you're playing Call of Duty Warzone on a four-core chip. Well, it's like that guy who bought the 6600K and now he's like, that sucks with World of Warcraft. And that's a 15-year MMO, although they've updated it. Yeah, but still. World of Warcraft is not running nicely on a four core chip. Here's a thought for you guys to do the math. This is just a different way of thinking it. Look, your money, your computer, you do what you want. I'm just trying to give you guys a different way of thinking about this. $550 minus $300 is $250. So Ryzen 9 versus Ryzen 5. So $250. If you were to divide them both over five years, it's $50 a year more to have a Ryzen 9 for five years than a Ryzen 5 for five years. Now, I don't think a Ryzen 5 5600X is going to be awesome for five years. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be awesome for a while. But I guess it depends whether you agree with me that six cores won't age well. Depends on your opinion. But for 50 bucks a year, for $4 a month, you can have a Ryzen 9 with 12 cores instead of a Ryzen 5 with 6. But it actually goes further than that. It's 250 difference now. But at some point in the future, let's say you go to sell these chips. Maybe you don't keep them for 10 years. Maybe you sell your CPU. A Ryzen 9 will be worth some amount more than a Ryzen 5. Mm -hmm. A good example of this is let's, let's rewind time. Let's go back to the good old days in 2011. 2011? Sandy Bridge. Mm. I5 2500K versus I7 2600K. Four cores, four threads. Versus four cores, eight threads. In 2011, the I5 was about 250. The I7 was about 350. Obviously, prices would have varied based on when you bought it and what huh. the deals were. But about that. It was about $100 difference. It's only hyper-threading. They're both four cars. There's no reason to buy that. Well, maybe, maybe not. What is an i7-2600K worth today in 2011? 50 bucks? 
What is an i7 2600K worth? You know what, actually I found a really good website the other day. That does that for you. I'm just pulling them up now. Um, let's see here. So, average finder, find the average sale price, not listings, but what they actually sold for. Okay. This is an i5 2500K, 73 sold. The average price was $55. Okay. This is an i7 26 cent. This is nine freaking years later. 72 of them sold. 100 bucks. Now, let's do this. 350 minus 250 is $100. That was your cost in 2011. But today, they're only $50 apart. They're $50 apart. Which means that the i7 has retained 50 of that $100 price increase. So if you sold both today, if you bought them both back then and you paid the extra $100 yep. and you sell today because you net $50 more, it would have only cost you 50 bucks over nine years to have an i7 instead of an i5. That might be the deal of the decade. Because you know what happens? What's $50 to buy nine? Oh, four, five, nine, five's 45. That's a year. Five and a half. It would have cost you less than 50 cents a month to buy the i7 nine years ago. Now, obviously not everybody who bought these nine years ago kept them nine years. Obviously not everybody would have used them that long. True. Needs change. I get it. What I'm trying to do is to get you all to think about total cost of ownership rather than initial purchase price. The Ryzen 5 5600X looks like a good deal at 300 versus 550. I'm sure many people go, man, I don't want to spend $550 on a CPU. 300, okay, that sounds about right. Why? Because you're emotionally stuck on the $300 number? Spock would not approve. No, Spock would not approve. <laughs> so if you take the $250 difference and then you have it for the purpose of three or five or six or seven years value, $125 difference divided by five years divided by 12 months, using that math, that's $2 difference a month. But for $2 difference a month, hold on, for $2 difference a month. Yes. This isn't hyper threading. This isn't going from a four core, four thread to a four core, eight thread. This is going from a six core, 12 thread to a 12 core 24 thread. It's literally double the CPU. It is. And double the cache. Mm -hmm. 70 megs versus 35. Buy a Ryzen 9 5900X, folks. That's my opinion. That's my opinion based on the total cost of ownership and the long-term ownership cost, not based upon what it costs you today. No, most people don't think like that. Well, that's me. <laughs> But of course, not everybody has it in the budget. Some people want to spend less. Of course, I'd like to point out that if you want to spend less, this is a Ryzen 5 3600, which is $190 right now. This is a third less than the 5600X. Will, and it's available, which the 5600X is sold out. Mm -hmm. Is this one third slower than a 5600X? I don't think so. Spoiler alert, no. No. Keep going. Did, did I just, I, I, I might have overkilled that topic. But Hopefully I, that answered your question, Metro. Hopefully that was helpful to some of you guys. 